This show is brought to you by adamandeve.com. If you go to adamandeve.com right now and enter glory, the code word glory, G-L-O-R-Y, at checkout, you'll get 50% off almost any item, a free sex swing, and free shipping. Be advised that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome at. This is episode 368 of Cognitive Dissonance. And we are not recording that directly after 367. 367. We're, not recording, we're not recording this. Who would suggest we're such We're not thing? doing that. Back to back to back. Absolutely not. It's we ridiculous. would never do such a we thing. We are definitely not taking some time off. No, to do other things. Squishing our show. And then smashing together. the show together. No, right. we wouldn't do, wouldn't that. do that. We wouldn't to, do that to you guys. Keep it fresh. Yeah, keep absolutely. it Absolutely. Current. current from like a couple weeks ago. That's it. We always keep Don't things current from a couple weeks ago. worry about the show notes. Absolutely. Everything that you hear is happening now. <laughs> I said it, so it's true. That's how this works. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, we speak that. I love this too. This is right wing watch. Lance Well Wallaby last meeting was so anointed. So anointed. It was so anointed, yeah. Cecil, that he left I've had it days like that. covered in angelic gold dust. I've had days like that where you're Weird. just like, man, did I use way too much of this? <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is Lance Wallaby. I just came to the most amazing set of meetings in Bend, Oregon. I wanted to tell you about it. Really unusual. It's called Hub Nation. Is he at? Is he in a Walmart or something? I think he's getting his tires replaced somewhere. Where is he he's, recording I think from? He's, I think he's at like a Midas or something. <laughs> getting For real. His muffler done. It's just like a big, like, it's just somebody's and, business. And every time I see this guy, he literally, he's always fucking doing a selfie like a tween and he looks like Harry Potter's ready to cast a spell at the, sh- at the thing. He's always got this fucking warlock look. Like he's like he's fucking trying to mind meld with the camera. Constantly. What the fuck? Sit down. This is a group of leaders that uh, literally have created an apostolic hub. For- it's an airport or something. They've literally created an apostolic hub. What would that mean if that meant something, Cecil? <laughs> an apostolic hub you would have to, I think it's a hub which have would have spokes, which would then be a giant apostolic wheel for an apostolic <laughs> bicycle. I think that's what he's talking about. You know about. what I was just thinking, though, yeah. is that the apostolic hubs are necessary. So, and the, and the nice thing is, like, you know, you don't have to get a connection when you're flying your angel in if you land at one of the apostolic right. hubs. Oh, that's true. Right? That's so true. You, you know more of those pesky connections. Costs a lot less to fly to those right. places. When yeah. you're in an apostolic sure. hub. Sure. It's just so much better. That's why I insist on dying in places that are apostolic hubs. Nice. It's just cheaper. I My think that's smarter. Flyer miles go I, better. Absolutely. I'm just, absolutely. Who wants a layover on the way yeah. to heaven? And the one in Colorado, you can get high. So. <laughs> for the 7M for, for each of the mountains. And I never had this happen. I don't have this happen frequently, but like while I was there, I was getting this gold dust and like glitter and stuff on my face that uh, people said they saw. But you know, I just kind of uh, he's in a strip club. <laughs> he's in a strip. He, like you go to a meeting. So that I'm, ain't gold dust, right? <laughs> oh, you come out. You're covered in fucking glitter. You're so fucking anointed. You're in a strip club, man. Uh, it's what you did. You went to a strip club. You're trying to fucking hide this with your wife. Why are you covered in fucking cheap perfume and the glitter? Um. Anointed, anointed, super. You seem real anointed right now. <laughs> seem real. I'm still a little anointed 
from the meeting. Am I glowing still? With the angel? I went to an apostolic hub. <laughs> As a, on an unrelated note, <laughs> wanna fuck? An apostolic hub. That's the name of the strip club he went to. That Can makes we sense start now. a cognitive dissonance glory hole strip club called Apostolic Hub? <laughs> and we'll like the strippers will come out all dressed in like angel wings and shit. They'll sprinkle glitter on the patrons. Sure. Let's all do dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, but then I was in, going to the men's room at the airport. It's like, wow, what's that stuff in my face? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go into enough men's rooms with holes in it, what's... you do get stuff on your face. That's what Who's happens. Who's that guy? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's semen. <laughs> That's Wallanu. <laughs> that stuff's real. It's like angels were in the room. And at one point. I know what they went to fucking Hobby Lobby ahead of time to get glitter. <laughs> like actual glitter, right? Not not uh, like not gold dust, but just fucking glitter. Just like I don't know, just some uh, some puffy paint too. Like <laughs> we're doing a scrapbooking event That's later scrap. in heaven. Fucking kidding me? You're an asshole. He's covered in like fabric pieces when he <laughs> leaves. <laughs> I remember saying that angels are bored because they have assignments to give Jesus his inheritance. In this period of shakeup, what the what fuck are, are you talking, talking about? about? He just made all of that up. There's bored angels that have to give Jesus his inheritance. What are the executors of God's will? Is God dead? Why does he get an inheritance? <laughs> None of this makes any sense. The angels are like, oh, there's nothing to do in paradise. It's so boring. <laughs> that it's not paradise. Oh, it's going on globally. There's ground to be taken. And I literally could feel a rush of God in the room. It was like the like like the bolts of the hair stood up right in the back of your neck. I thought, whoa, this is strange. But I mean, think about this. That there are angels on assignment and they've been assigned to give Jesus territory in media what right the now. Fuck. They've been assigned to are give they, Jesus are territory. They newsy in media. angels? <laughs> <laughs> I like that he doesn't get it just he's just Jesus and they're just like, we're just gonna give you a little territory. And see how you do. <laughs> Uh, your territory the is thing, the northwest Jesus, side. I've, I've been and... fucking, I've been fucking carving some shit out for you down here. You never fucking, <laughs> you never fucking come and see the fucking business, Jesus. Territory in Hollywood. Why do you think the New York Times and CNN is in such deep doo doo? And why? And what's happening with Hollywood with Johnny Depp and Bill Maher? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, oh, we're supposed to believe the angels made Bill Maher tell an off-color, slightly racist joke. That's it. Angels. They came down from heaven and like, I don't know, maybe make them make a joke. See what that works. And Johnny Depp, the same thing. Johnny Depp will say something a little. Well, the, they have, they have, you know, mountains that represent certain parts of the world. Right. So maybe they have angels that represent the N word and they get inside of you yeah. and they just make you say it. They're like, you know, those fucking assholes who think there's like a sugar demon and a caffeine yeah. demon and a, or, it's like angels for the good stuff, or right? Maybe instead uh, that was actually somebody who like in that Evan Almighty movie, or maybe the, the one before that, I don't know. What was the one before Bruce that? Almighty? Bruce Almighty. In the Bruce Almighty movie, yeah. when he's standing on the side, he's going, and he's making him do all this stuff. Right? Maybe, maybe somebody was staying on the side for for Bill Maher. That's it. And like, give blah, 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 N word. And then just he just, a, he just spits it out in the middle of his joke. There's just like an angel hand that goes right up his ass and fucking <laughs> puppets him. Ventriloquist him. Burp, burp, burp. <laughs> no, he said that's a, he said that cause he's a curmudgeonly old shit. That's it's why I <laughs> said it. <laughs> All the big mouths and the crazies as they run their mouth. It's like God is literally taking the wheels off of the chariot of Pharaoh as he's trying to persecute who God is, what God is doing, basically. So what in the world I, does that mean? Fucking dude, I haven't, what I, in the world I does that sentence mean? I haven't any of this so far. God has, did he say, I think he said God has literally, literally yeah. taken the wheels, the wheels off the Pharaoh's chariot as he's trying to persecute God. That guy is like, he's like one of those guys who traps you in a room and speaks riddles at you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Bible says they're going to eat their arms. The Bible says they're going to eat their babies. Then it says they're going to eat their children. That's what people do when they get hungry. This story is also from Right Wing Watch. This is Jim Baker's guest. I, shockingly, shockingly saying that God requires Christians to be preppers. 
Wow, what a huh. controversial That's thing to weird. say on the bucket show. It's almost as if he's saying these things that can profit his business. Well, uh, yeah, let's hear him out. Let's not jump. That's true. Time to I, a conclusion. You're right. I shouldn't do All that. Right. All right. So this is a uh, Jim Baker show. You need to be prepared. Are you a prepper? Would oh. you call yourself a prepper? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a book about it. <laughs> yeah, buy buckets. Well, buy, buckets. Buy, buy buckets. Buy buckets. Buy buckets. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You. yeah. Big- well, I'm alive, aren't I? <laughs> you know, not like a fool who isn't prepping. Time. Yeah. So you believe in 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 practical prepping as oh, far as so. food and very much so. all of that. What people don't understand, especially with Christians, is that God mandates it. He tells us to do this. He says, always be ready to share the hope. It's the same thing. It's the same yep. thing we're talking about on the other show when we're talking about those prosperity gospel people. They just found another thing that God mandates that you have to pay for. Yeah, right. It's just another thing that God is mandating. Tell you what, man. It's just mostly like most of the fucking preppers are a bunch of fucking middle class, lower middle class, poverty straight. It's, yeah, like the, the wealthy people aren't prepping. Yeah. Wealthy people. You like fucking, you know, you go to some fucking mansion that, and they're full of fucking Jim Baker food buckets? Absolutely not. Yeah, it's funny. They're not building furniture yeah. out of fucking five-gallon buckets. <laughs> and covering it with plywood and a <laughs> tablecloth. Right. That, that advice is only for poor people. Uh, of course right? Because is. you'd be like, in my house, you want me to do this? Well, because because you're saying to yourself, you're like, well, I already live in a low-income house. I don't have enough money for a end table. This would make a perfect end table. Yeah. All I need is a, a cloth and a piece of thing. And, mm. and I can pay this man what it would cost to get a good end table. Right. For this bucket. Yeah. And probably a lot more than that, actually. Or like if you're if you're wealthy, wealthy, you know, wealthy, wealthy, you're building a bunker, right? If you're a prepper that's yeah. wealthy, you're building a bunker. You're not making a fucking dining room table out of sure. fucking buskets. You know, it's it's interesting. I'm listening to a book. It's not a book. It's a, one of the great courses right now on the uh, the Black Death. And one of the things that they're talking about is indulgences. And how people were getting indulgences at the time. And indulgences, for people who don't know, an indulgence, at least, and this is a very simplistic way that she explained it in the book, is is that an indulgence, everybody goes to purgatory, but you can pay to get out of purgatory a little bit, right? You can get out of purgatory in the ancient mindset um, by paying money. And so you spend less time there. Can I ask a question? Because I don't, I, I'm curious. Is purgatory bad? Yeah, I think it's not. It's just, I, I, I it's either bad or boring. And so they they want they want to try to get to heaven as fast as they can. And people could there was a warrior class that could actually just skip purgatory altogether as long as they pledge themselves to like the church to go fight for it and stuff like, like crusaders. that. Like crusaders. Yeah. So they would huh. they would skip it. That's why they went is because they would, you know, they knew that they would go to heaven without it. But you think about this, you know, even back in even, even the Bible itself has people that are in power getting the best shit from other people. You know, just give me your stuff because I'm the mouthpiece of God. Sure. In this example with the with the indulgences, give me my, give me your money because I'm the mouthpiece of God and I can absolve you of some of these sins to make it so it's better when you go to heaven. Give me your money because when God fucking finally pulls the rapture button, I want pulls the rapture cord. I want to make sure that you guys are okay and I'm going to give you all this stuff to survive right, right. with. Yeah. Give me all your money and I can talk to God for you and we can make sure that you get a little bit of wealth too. It, there's it, it, the Bible calls for it initially. Like the Bible is is kind of like this one. It's a book that tells people how to be con men. Yeah, right. Yeah. And if you look at it and you read it, and you're like, "Fuck, I want to be the priest. I want to be the one in charge. I want to be the pastor because I'm going to make a fuck ton of money off all these people." It's it's. I mean, it, it's it, right. It, it's there. happened yeah. for for centuries for, yeah. for since the beginning. It's not a structural de- defect. It's a feature. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. not that these people are 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 perverting the word of God. No, look in the Bible and they talk about give the best fucking shit to the fucking guy who's going to kill it for you for, right. for you know, who, give your greatest bull with the biggest balls to the guy who's going to kill it. And then you that's know, a waste of bull balls. It really though. is. Yeah. Don't you want to breed successively bigger balls? In your bull generation? Uh, eventually they're harder to move that way. So I like big balls and I cannot lie. <laughs> In meekness and fear. Always means always. Always is in good times. Always is in bad times. Always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we are not always ready, yes. then how do we share the hope? Right. And by being prepared. By Who would having- you share it with? Who would you share it with? It's okay. It has apocalypted. And you're like, well, you're zombie I survived. Wife. <laughs> I survived so I could go on a fucking mission trip <laughs> to the zombies. 
Are you fucking kidding? Having food on hand, by having these things on hand, it's less of a distraction now that the enemy can use against us. That's right. And now I have that freedom because I'm not burdened with, oh, wow, what are my kids going to eat? Right. Or whatever. And I can now share the hope. Exactly. The hope of what? Just the hope that you survived the apocalypse. But you're not you gonna, can... right? Isn't it like in their whole thing? Like, it's all fucked? That's how apocalypses work. <laughs> it's built into the thing. You can't choose the apocalypse you wish to wish, do you wish to skip. Like, you can't be like, <laughs> no, you pass. can't pass go. Right? And like, collect 200 uh, buckets. Which one? Which one? What is this? Uh, yeah, I'm not doing this one. Mm, I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm, no. gonna, I'm gonna wait for Gehenna. I'm, I'm a, a Marvin full. Gardens I'm just... apocalypse guy. <laughs> That's my thing. Marvin Gardens. Definitely going to wait for Ragnarok. <laughs> and people will listen about Jesus. We've said it a million times on this broadcast, but I know for a decade, I worked in, in the inner city, went down, and that's how I ended up adopting our kids and all of that, by meeting them in the inner city. But you know what? We would always go down and feed them first. Give those little babies, give those little tummies some food, and then we would teach them Bible stories and teach them about Jesus. And then they would want us to meet their moms, typically. Usually dads weren't My around. God, but- the story is horrible. Isn't it? The story is horrible. Isn't it? You are not coming across as a good person. Yeah. You are a horrible person. Yeah. But what I do is I feed the fucking, the sure. weakest. The, the, oh my, this I is can, horrible. I convince people to horrible listen story. to this stuff with food. This happens all over though. I homeless know, people, I know. homeless people are preached at constantly. I know. Homeless we've we've talked to homeless people who sent messages to the show that have said, you know, you can't go to certain places unless they then let they make you go to services. They make you do this stuff. Like this is their coercion technique. They give you a bit of food and then they make you listen to Jesus. But even crazier like is they start at the kids. Yeah, of they, course. So yeah. they start at the kid. The yeah. kid. They give the kid some food. The kid is then happy and impressed, and they're also impressionable, right? Because sure. they're fucking kids. Then they use they use the fact that they were just nice to him and indoctrinate them, and then say, "Let's go talk to your parents." Exactly. And now, what are the parents supposed to do? You just fed my fucking kid. Yeah. I can't feed my kid, or I wouldn't be in this situation. Sure. So now I'm going to listen to your shit, and I'm going to feel obligated. Yeah. That's monstrous. Yeah. It's, it's monstrous to the kids. It's monstrous to the parents. It's it's every lever. It's so much leverage, man. It really is. It's every single. It's every single bit of emotional leverage. Yeah, they're just they're pushing it every at every every turn. It's, awful. it's terrible. It's so manipulative. But typically, moms. And the next thing you know, you know, twenty years later, Jim and Lori Baker adopt five Mexican kids, and they were from the inner city. But that's how it happens. And so. That is so real because you have to be practical with the food. That's why we have all these amazing food offers for you. What are you going to take them into the inner city and feed people with? I don't understand how that story related to you have to be practical with the food. It doesn't make any sense. Like, I think they're saying, like, if you have enough food and there's an apocalypse, you can then adopt five Mexicans. Is that, is that, that, are you going to trade? Is that, I get it now. We're going to go to a Mexican baby system of denominations. Okay, of, I got it. So how many, like, yeah. Yeah, so my car is worth four Mexican babies. This bucket of food is worth two Mexican babies. I'm confused, though. I'm very confused. Okay, sure. You have a car. Yeah. I have a bunch of Mexican babies. Right. You're going to give me a car and I give you Mexican babies? I feel like I am absolutely fucking you in that deal. <laughs> Because I got your car and you just got a bunch of Mexican babies. But I'm in it for the long haul, Tom. <laughs> Plus, if I've got five Mexican babies in one car. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need a lot of room in that car. Yeah, you're going to need saying. like 25 Mexican babies to fill <laughs> just, that car up. Or like if you have like a Fiat or something, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If you have like a motorcycle, yeah, that works. <laughs> Like, what are you supposed to, like, tie all the Mexican babies together like fucking sled dogs? No, they're like bumpers. You just tie them on just in case you bump into anything. You're just, and... you're just sledding through the apocalypse, whipping Mexican babies <laughs> who are pulling you like the fucking I did a rod through the ashes. <laughs> this is this is the apocalypse I'm okay with. Yeah. <laughs> You got like a lead baby in the front who's like more aggressive. Yeah. Keep the other babies on track. <laughs> it gets really cold and you can't strike that match and you look at that lead baby and you're like, <laughs> I'm going to cut you open and stick my hands in you. I know, Jim, you were going to go to one earlier, but we have these individual buckets now 
that we have available, like the okay. Fiesta bucket, probably Mondo's <laughs> favorite. I, I keep <laughs> a fiesta who's, Tom, who's having a fiesta at the end of the world hey so uh the earth is littered with the corpses of friends and family i may be having a fiesta I may be having but a, it's sick of the mayo i may be having a siesta but not a fiesta I, I don't know if I can. I can't see him anymore. It would be great if the Fiesta pail was in the shape of like a like a donkey pinata. <laughs> you just knock it open and like tacos open. fall in your mouth. <laughs> Mexican babies. It's full of Mexican you knock, babies. You knock the leg off and guacamole for <laughs> <laughs> We gotta eat it all before it turns brown. <laughs> you're just laying under Where's it. Where's the chip pinata? Like, a, like an old timey movie when they used to drink alcohol. You're just laying under with your mouth open. <laughs> Guacamole's pouring all over your face. I've seen that movie too. Uh, by right, the way. Yeah, right. Uh. Caliente. <laughs> you know, the only fiesta pail like this I'd be interested in buying is if it was full of alcohol. Fiesta. If you just open this up and it was straight tequila, the yeah, whole thing. If, if you open it up and there was salt around the rim, <laughs> then maybe put the rest it's of just, it. You open it up, it's like a straw pops out. <laughs> and it's, like, it's like a margarita juice box. You just <laughs> stick one in the Five top. gallons. You're like, oh, it's the apocalypse. I'm going to drink myself to Mommy death. Mommy needs her fiesta pail. <laughs> Go bug your Mexican brother. <laughs> The people who never started N that, to, me to get too. ready. Me too. Just do something. Just do something and, to get and started. I know, Ray. You, were you? It was your family preppers. Did how did my, you, my did you mother go by it naturally? My well, my mother is a depression era child, and because <laughs> she's of that, a crazy old hoarder. She's, she's, <laughs> she <laughs> she <laughs> saves all the saran wrapper off the meat, and she just has a giant ball of it in the center of her kitchen <laughs> that she rolls around. <laughs> She dies. She was crushed by it. <laughs> well, my grandmother has, you know, 25 mason jars full of buttons. So she's like an old school prepper. Have you ever watched the hoarder show? That hoarder yeah. show? Dude, there was one that I like I watched and I could not I could not stop thinking about it. And it was this woman who lived in a you know shitty old place and she was crazy. And, you know, she had a. Yeah. But they, they start moving stuff and they found like cages of animals yeah. and like dead animals. Like yeah. just a cage with a dead animal in it. And it's just curled up. And like she just let a dog die. And like you're just like, how the fuck does that happen? Because the dog clearly is just in the cage and just screams probably for hours to be let out. You know, probably because it it's hungry and it just knows you're there and could feed it. And it's freaking out in this cage. And she just let that thing die. And I'm just like, holy shit. And she's crying saying, don't do this to me. And I'm like, I would fucking throw you in jail, lady. I would fucking throw you in jail for that. But, you know, I've seen a number of those where they have like, like, they, like, I don't so watch that show very often. I, but I've seen a handful man. like, there, there's like, there's somewhere like they just like, they're moving shit around and they like move like piles of papers and there's like a flat cat. Like it's just flat. Sure. It's just like, it's like a, there's, and yeah. they don't even know how many they have in the See, house. The I, house is full of, them. I at least understand if a cat goes into their garbage and dies, but these are cages full of animals that she just watched die. And that would take so long. And it would just That's be so thing. torturous. Be yeah, right. It's the, I mean, it's the worst thing. I mean, it's not the worst thing. There's been plenty of worse things right. out but there. But it's a very bad But thing. it's a horrible thing to like, and you're watching, you're like, how the fuck? Like, who calls somebody on this lady? Who didn't call somebody way early? They're right? fucking yeah. kids. Right. Oh, they shit kids? I would call on my parents if they did that. Dude, I, I would call on anybody because I would. Here's the thing. She's mentally ill. Yeah, I would. I would. Right? I, if my parents yeah. did that to a dog, I would call somebody and be like, no, they're fucking, they're abusing this animal. Yeah. You need to get over there. But like, even if you didn't care about animals, and I, I do, but even if you didn't care yeah, about I animals, too. right? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. joked about it a while ago. I, I, you're I the do. worst person I, yeah, in the I whole do. world. Yeah, 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 I do right? care about yeah, animals, though. But like, if somebody that you knew was in this position, they're mentally ill. Like, you have an obligation sure. to their health, even sure. if you don't give a shit about the dog. Right. You have an obligation to their health. Like, yeah. fucking make a call. Yeah. I just, I, I, when I saw it, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. That hoarder stuff is that just crazy. Is, and that show, I stopped watching it because those people don't get better. No. You know, it's, I liked, I used to watch Intervention. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I used to like to sit down and have a nice drink and watch Intervention. <laughs> and it, <laughs> I used to do the same thing. I'd shoot up. I just, <laughs> <laughs> but at least like at Intervention, like a lot of times they'd be like, and then, you know, 
they went on they changed six months and they were fine you know and then they're like and they got a job and they're happy you know very often they had a good you know the horrors it's like later they bought a subscription to every possible newspaper and died in an avalanche of their own filth yeah. And you're just like, well, that was depressing. That's super depressing. That that's the problem, though. I think with those exploitation shows, with like those, which is exactly what that shit is. is. That is that you're just watching someone crumble. Yeah, you're just right. watching a crumbling person yep. on those shows, and they never get any better. And you just and all you do is just sit and watch it and get depressed. Or in some cases, I'm sure people watch it and be like, thank God my not my life's not like that. But you know, what's the I just I just don't see a benefit in those. So I don't yeah. watch I don't I, watch yeah, it. Yeah, I stopped so, watching. Yeah. They were kind of interesting at first, you yeah, know, to, to, to watch. I, I learned a lot of that. And then I was in the military. I was in special operations and mm. learned a lot of stuff there. Yeah. And then I just the Loma Prieta earthquake also had a lot of effect on me. Mm-hmm. Other events like Rita and Katrina had effects yeah. on me. So it's yeah. all these things combined. Well, they scared you. Is that what you mean? You probably he probably wasn't anywhere near those things. Yeah, I think I think what he's saying is when I saw natural disasters happen on TV, they made me feel scared. And so I think you should feel scared, too. I Incidentally, do. by a bucket <laughs> on an unrelated note. Unrelated by a all bucket combined right. has created this preparedness mindset. And, and I live it. I live. Do you yeah, have but, any prepping stuff? Uh, Do you have anything prepared? I have nothing prepared. You, you, I, I keep I keep one box of ammunition in my closet for hopefully I can, if there's a flash, I can end my life and my wife's life. That's what I keep it for. That's a good plan. That's uh, what I keep yeah. it for. I'm just like, I because what, what am I going to do with a box of ammunition in the middle of f- 3 million people? What do you, what do you hope to do? Right. Yeah. It's for you. That's a, that's it's a for free, you. That's for you. It's ammo. for you. It's yeah, not for right. anybody else. Like, yeah. and like what I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my pistol and try to drive out of Chicago during a fucking of an evacuation. I'm, I, I'd be better off just getting a backpack and walking out of Chicago. You re- actually, you really would. Yeah. You really truly would. In my car, I keep a, there's a backpack in my car that has a handful of things in case my car breaks down and it's cold. That's really it. Cause I, my car broke down once when I was cold Yeah, when it was very bitter, bitter, bitter yeah, yeah, cold. Yeah. And I got stuck in the middle of the night, like two, three in the morning in the middle of the night. And I couldn't, this was before cell phones and everything. And I couldn't get, uh, you know, I, it was just fucking free. Like I was scared cold. So what did you, what I did was you do? Scared cold. Uh, I walked to, uh, I was, so I was on uh three fifty five or two ninety. I don't remember which. And I, no, I walked to army trail toll plaza. So wherever that's at, is that three fifty five or two three fifty five. So I walked, down the road to the army trail toll plaza. And then there's like, like the area for the toll workers that's over there. And they had a pay phone and I actually called a friend's mom and she's like, okay, well it's going to be an hour or two, you know, cause it was the middle of the night and she wasn't nearby. And then I turn around and I walked back to my car. My car was dead. So it wasn't warm at all. My car was you're you just know, out of the wind fucking below zero. Yeah. I just hung out in there stomping my feet and trying to, you couldn't sit in the toll plaza. Like, they weren't, they weren't open. It was the middle of the night. I just oh. got to a pay phone. Oh. Is all I did. I got to a pay phone, made a collect call, Jesus. called my buddy's mom. Oh. And then she came out and she got me. That was the thing. So now I keep a backpack in my car. Sure. It's got, you know, an extra blanket and like the hands, like the toasty toes. Sure. And, you know, a hand. That's the closest yeah. I come to prepping. I think it's got like I some have one power of those, bars that's like a hundred years old. I there. have one of those too. What I have in the back is a tauntaun. Yeah. And I just... <laughs> I just cut it open and I climb into it. But I have an SUV, so it fits. Yeah, we got more room. Yeah, I just drive yeah. a sedan. You think it smells bad on the outside. I Let do, me tell you. actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, uh, we'd like to take a moment to talk a little bit about, about our sponsor, adamandeve.com. Uh, adamandeve.com is still offering their swing. So I think they're going into baseball season with that. It's sw- <laughs> but it's not a swing and a miss. No. It's a swing and a hit. I'll tell you what. If right in this, right in the wet spot. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need to make it wetter, you can make that wet spot even wetter <laughs> by buying some lube at half off. When you enter Gloria checkout right. at adamandeve.com. That's right. You get half off of, of one item. Think about all the fucking juices and ointments and liniments you can buy yeah, to make your sex life even weirder. Even weirder. From smell Adam better, though. It might smell better. Hey, maybe. when I'm around, it couldn't smell much worse. 
I'll tell you that much. You know, you could get you could you could buy the fist dildo if you want to get that what going. You mean, could don't you have to? We got how else would you I, make it great again? I already have a huge selection, so I don't need to buy it myself. But someone out in the audience might not have it in their collection. What a tragedy that would be. We should rectify that. Recommended. <laughs> but I also want to say too that you're gonna not only we get something at half off, right? You'll also get free shipping, right? You'll get some free gifts, but you also get specifically a, a free, free sex, sex swing. swing. So go to adamandeve.com, enter glory at checkout, get some free stuff, get some free shipping, get some free sex swing, and enjoy your sex life. Way better than a free sex teeter-totter. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> when you go to the bottom, those things like wiggle. Sex wiggle, monkey bars. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sex sit and spin, though. <laughs> Solid. Hey, that's Solid. not free, though. Yeah. <laughs> So this is also from Right Wing Watch. Sam Roar, Roar, Roarman. <laughs> Bob Roarman. Roarman. That's All a you Chicago people joke. are going to wow. get that one. Uh, <laughs> Bob Roarman. <laughs> it's like a Victory Auto Records commercial. It's like a Solosian Edelson Solosian Edelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ex-wife met. I don't remember if it was Solozzi or Edelson. I don't remember. I don't actually <laughs> know which one. Or Edelson. She either met Siskel or Ebert. I'm I not whichever. sure which one. <laughs> she said he was a dick. Was he was he? a total asshole. Yeah. Uh, so Sam. Was that the guy who would paint any car, any color for $59.95? Or what? was that a different guy? No, I remember that though. Yeah. No, Solozzi Edelson Chevrolet. They, had, okay. they were car Yeah, dealers. that's a car dealership. There was yeah. a guy who would I say, remember that. I'll paint any car, any color for $59.95. God, he was that, a he was like a, a mob guy. That Come guy's on. got lung cancer right now. <laughs> that guy, no, that guy's got bodies buried in a fucking <laughs> in a fucking <laughs> patio somewhere. That guy's probably buried in a patio somewhere. <laughs> that's not that's not a life that has a four hundred one k attached oh, to it, right? Man. There's no retirement plan from the mob. Do you remember the Peter Francis Geraci commercials? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Call one eight hundred whatever the fuck for my info tapes. You remember that? Because it was bankruptcy info tapes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they were actual. Cassette tapes. Okay, so here's what you got to do. If you're listening to the show, send us a YouTube video. Tweet yes. at us your local famous YouTube thing. The like commercial. A, a commercial. Yeah. The commercial from your local guy. That defines that your childhood. That defines like, either your childhood, your area especially. Right. Because all those sort of, like the Empire commercial, that defines right. sort of this area. So... I was sad when they changed the number. Yeah. It was five, eight, eight, <laughs> two, three hundred for my whole life. Yeah. And then they changed. It was like one, eight hundred empire. And it like doesn't sing right at <laughs> all. The jingle doesn't work anymore. Right? Send us, send us, tweet them at us. Go to Twitter. We're yeah. at, we're at, uh, you can find us. Uh, if you go to dissonancepod.com, you can find our Twitter at the top there. You can tweet these at us. Go to Twitter. Find your your iconic commercial on YouTube that's from your area. It's guaranteed to be there. Right. And send it to us. Favorite one wins. Favorite yeah. one wins a shirt. We'll so we'll find the favorite one we like, and we'll and we'll and we'll we'll shoot you a shirt. So Sam, Roarman, <laughs> <laughs> opposition to Trump is creating the circumstances out of which will come the Antichrist. Before we start. Mm -hmm. I don't a hundred percent disagree. <laughs> <laughs> that everybody's been saying this too. Like this is sort of a common thing. It is. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen a lack of respect for the presidency like we're seeing now. Oh, oh really? What, 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 when they lynched the effigy, is that, are we it's, talking it about that? It was a respectful lynch. Is it? A, <laughs> they gave him a last word. <laughs> they had, they had pressed their white suits the night before. <laughs> very, they were very nice. Right. When they, yeah. when they had like the signs that like compared Obama to a monkey. Sure. In that it had Obama dressed as a monkey with like a fucking banana. Yeah. Was that was that a respectful that was racist caricature? Res it was very respectful. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Out loud we're saying this? I have never had such a short memory as the memory I have right now. <laughs> Whether you like Donald Trump or not, that's not my point. My point is that we have we have uh, we got another movement in the country that wants anything but order. Anything but law in order. Um, That's the same thing. You said the same thing. You paused. You tried to come up with a second thought. You didn't have one. You came up with a TV show title. <laughs> they want everything but a special victims unit. They want everything but criminal intent. What this, you know, they, there's a group in the country that wants something other than law and order. No, I, you know, this, this is the problem is that they keep mischaracterizing 
the resistance of Donald Trump on the streets with very peaceful protests so far with this for a long time and currently you know the right wing lunatics there, there's a right wing fringe that wants to overthrow and has wanted to secede and blew up a federal building if anyone remembers that is kind of a big deal yeah. and forms militias you know all over the country so those are anti law and order guys too some of them recently took over that fucking like farmhouse or sure. whatever in yeah. Oregon that was up there. The flamingo hut or whatever <laughs> it was. <laughs> a birdhouse. <laughs> <or something>. birdhouse. <laughs> this, this, this fucking nonsense where they pretend that it is uh, specific to one side of the argument. Both sides of right. the argument, the left and the yeah. right, have ultra fringe groups that are anarchist in nature sure. or in deed, sure. if not in philosophy. There was a, a bunch of right wing guys were sharing. I don't know. I, and again, I don't know. I don't know how true these things are, if they're just trolls or if they're real people that are doing this. I don't know. Right. But I remember seeing an image that was shared by some people that had on it a uh, it was it was showing how to make a flag that actually you could beat somebody. Oh, with. I remember seeing this. Yeah. It's like carry around this big beating stick and tie a flag to it. Yeah. And now you got a, a now you got an America beater. Yeah. You can right. just beat yeah. somebody with yeah. this thing. Yeah. Because you went out and got an actual thing like a like a piece of fucking hickory that you can fucking crack somebody's noggin in with instead of just, you know, just some random like piece Dollar. of dollar. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh -huh. And so, and so, yeah, these people are, they're, they're, they're planning for this stuff. There's unrest, like you say, on both sides in some of these, but it's also a tiny portion of this. Right. I mean, when you're talking, I was, I've, I've seen these marches all over the country when they're doing the tax march and they're doing the science march and they're doing the, you know, all these different marches. A lot of them are very, very peaceful. The women's march was ultra peaceful. Right. Millions of people marched and there wasn't any arrests. Yep. So you're, you're talking about, you know, when they're saying there's unrest, it's it, it, and they're saying that these people don't like law and order. These people are fucking. If they didn't like law and order, they wouldn't send in the permits for the fucking march, <laughs> right? I don't like law and order. Allow me to fill out this form in triplicate. There were cops right. at the fucking march I went to. They like law and order because they asked the law to make sure there was order. <laughs> let all the prisoners out. Let everything go and cut people's heads off. Everything's OK. I mean, what the fuck are you talking don't you about? Don't remember when that was the narrative? Let all the, the prisoners out. Cut off. Why are we on a pirate ship? Is we, that what we're talking about here? You didn't you didn't notice the swelling seas and the yar. The, yeah, the, yar. We got it. We got an awesome Jolly Roger. Yar. All right. Now you're on board. <laughs> on board. Huh? <laughs> huh? I mean, I've never seen the contrast like we see it right now. Well, I don't th I don't think we have, uh, certainly not in our lifetime. But again, you're hitting on a very you're great old. You're old. Do you not remember the 60s, no the shit, race riots right? of the 60s? No shit. Key point. Um, lawlessness is what the is what the devil, Satan is attempting to create. Are the devil and Satan like Jesus and God, like we were talking about before? Oh, I had double doubles. Where, double, double, single doubles. Where, <laughs> where the devil and Satan look at each other and they're like, bro fist. <laughs> is, that, is that what we're looking at here? Are they are they one creature or, or two creatures? Well, I don't know. Are they, they live in different areas? Because isn't there nine hells? Are there nine? I know there's nine circles according to Dante. So there's who wrote Lucifer, a poem, and so that means it's true. The devil, Bulls Satan, Beelzebub, Baphomet, Bahamut, whatever his name is. Um, Cthulhu, uh, <laughs> Obama. I still have four. I still have three more. Obama, um, uh, Madeline Albright, the new Coke, the new Coke. There you go. I think we've got all it's nine. It. That's that's the that's so the that's, nine Satans. That's the or and the, they, nine, the nine evil well, evil. But they're the dictators. nine. They're the nine evil dictators that all merge in one Voltron Hydra, and they uh, all have different heads. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then that's her, true. Yeah. It's true because we just made that right up, <laughs> and that's how the truth works now. <laughs> The ideological enemies of Christ, and I'm going to put some of these into it. Globalism as an ideology, the one world government is is not a thing. No, it's it's not just happening. not a thing. So it's not a thing. No, the one you've been I've been hearing about this since I was a little boy about the one world government, and the black helicopters, the, one and the world new world government, government, order, the yeah. one world government. Yeah. We're going towards the one world government, one world government. I'm just like, man, who the fuck? What fucking world do you live on? What what is the one world government doing about Syria then? Well, uh, what, is Syria is part of it, right? It would have to right? be because it's, it's part, part, of, the part world. of the world. Yeah, it's all about throwing off God's laws. Islam, the other leading, I'm calling them the tool for chaos, uh, the ideological enemy. There's an antichrist cult view 
they are all about creating chaos. So is the establishment. Uh, I, I do Wait a see- minute. The establishment is about creating chaos. They the are es- the establishment. Like, wouldn't they want to stay with the established things? Isn't Trump the establishment? He's the duly elected. They have all three fucking. Fo- they have the fucking Supreme I Court. I don't understand how any of this works. They have both the fucking House and the Senate. And then they got the presidency. What does the establishment mean if not? They have a majority of governorships. Do you know what's been interesting about this narrative? Honestly, interesting is that the Republicans are still playing the underdog card all the time. They're they're in charge. Yeah, they are in. They are numerically more numerous. Constantly numerically more numerous. Yeah, it's pretty good. There's more numbers of their numbers. There's a lot of them. The fuck is wrong with me? But Trump even is is tweeting shit about like how there's democratic obstructions. And you're just like, dude, you blew past those Democrats. Don't you remember when you blew past the Democratic obstructions? Isn't he always, bra- he's so funny because he'll, br- on the one side, he'll brag constantly, constantly brag about like all of his success, you know, like, oh, everybody loves me. I'm so amazing. I got elected by a landslide, but the Democrats won't let me do anything. How can, bo- how can all those things right, be how true? Is that? How is how are the- how can How can you hold all of yeah. that in your mind at the same time without exploding like mm. scanners? I think there's a lot of room in there. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's a fucking echo. Some presentations pairing on tying together and connecting the dots between globalism as an ideology, Islam as an ideology, and the establishment as an ideology. And they're all working together. Their common things are they hate God. They hate the Constitution. They despise Jesus Christ. They, they want to kill, uh, they destroy Israel and the United States. And they are using chaos and division as their way of creating the circumstances, we know biblically that that chaotic circumstances is what will out of which will come the Antichrist. Oh my God, this is so boring. Why I'm would you this sleep? Guy. Listen Can we to move this on? Guy. Oh this my guy gosh. is terrible. He doesn't make any sense and he can't speak. These things that we're seeing are preparatory for the emerging of the Antichrist, but for that, it's the reappearance. It's, it's what are the we reappear- fucking dilated at 10 centimeters? <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? The doctor's there with his catcher, man. It's He's my like, fucking Here we go. cervix of face. Give me the fucking salad spoons. It's coming Jesus. out. Curse of Jesus ah. Christ. And that's what I am looking for. But we have to understand that what we're seeing has been foretold. It is exactly what the Bible is talking about. Well, then it's fucking inevitable. Who cares? Also, that's so vague. Of course, everything's been foretold and then nothing's come of it. Right. So what does he want us to stop these he, things? That's why fucking I, Harold Camping counted on his fingers. Right. And came up with a date that was wrong. But it, but it, it, if I follow his train of thought, all these things are happening. They're foretold. They're going to keep happening. So, OK, let them happen. That's your God's plan. Are you going to stand in the way of your God's plan? I wonder if they think like it's a test. You know what I mean? Like, like this is if, oh, like if God I don't, gets you close yeah, and then pulls back. Like I'm, God edges no. you to the apocalypse. Okay, no. <laughs> well, what happens is, is God gets you. God, God will threaten. <clears throat> He'll be like, "I'm gonna fucking do this. I'm just gonna let these people run roughshod over you unless you fight back." And oh. so God keeps on putting up these obstacles for them to. God's like a guy who sets hurdles in a track for you to like jump over. God's fucking annoying. Hmm. He just, he's like a shitty little brother is what he's like. <laughs> he just, you wake up and he's fucking set your alarm like an hour ahead. Ah! Just like fucks with you. He's just like fucking, he's like a shitty prank war. Actually, guy. that's a good idea. I'm going to do that to Sarah. <laughs> I like that. About what will happen is happening. And we need to, as God's people, be taking advantage of this time and pointing people to Jesus Christ, understanding the battle of the ages is unfolding before battle our very of the eyes. Ages. Yeah, fucking in a few weeks, Game of Thrones. Wasn't that a rock opera? <laughs> you know, there there is nothing normal about being a sodomite. There is no life that will come out of a rectum. You cannot produce life. It's only death. Every time, there's nothing in a rectum except waste, refuse, and death. It wouldn't be a show, Tom, without Rick Wiles. It wouldn't, so let's have a show. Here's Rick Wiles. <laughs> Uh, Rick Wiles stands with Russia because what? the people in control of America today are Satanists. Well, he, I, there was several people before that were really for Russia because they don't like gays. Right. And so there was a lot of people who were like, they got it right over there when they beat the shit out of their gays. 
and they beat them in the street, and they do right. beat the fuck out of them. They yeah. beat them. Right. They beat them, yeah. and they put them in conversion shit, and then well, they where, like where throw them they, in jail. Where is, is it Chechnya, where it's like uh, they got the extermination or the concentration camps? Yeah, for them now? Just fucking concentration camps. I mean, you could call them extermination camps. I suspect they're probably pretty accurate. Probably not too far. Probably off. not too far off. Yeah. What happens when you concentrate a gay person? Like, how much water do you have to add they back? Be- they become a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> they're like those they're like those like uh rainbow marshmallows in cereal they're just like constantly dehydrated no matter how much <laughs> liquid sits on or near them all right so this is rick wiles uh talking big talks about russia i believe the deep state at its core is satanic of course you do <laughs> Shocking. Because I, you believe there's a deep feel state. Like, I kind of feel like that encapsulates his great thesis, and we're not going to get any better than that. Yeah. That's it. It is Luciferian. They, that synagogue of Satan, dark state, in 1917, overthrew. Why has it got to be a synagogue? Why has it got to be a Jew thing? I don't know. For real. Yeah, no, like that's that's absolutely. Yeah. A, yeah. It's why anti-Semitic. Yeah, you why do you, it, what, like, why it could it be a, a mosque of Satan. Right. Yeah. It could be a temple of Satan. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Could Why? be a bad bath and beyond of saying <laughs> <laughs> the Russian government. The czar. They had a Bolshevik revolution. And yeah, the Russian people did that. Yeah. The czar had what? like the czar had very little part in that. <laughs> what the fuck? All he was was taken out of power. He didn't want that. Was that the one with the it. horse cock? Which one was the one with the horse cock? Wasn't there one who had like a fucking big old Naka who was like banging the woman? Wasn't that Rasputin who was doing that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah he had a big horse cock or whatever. <laughs> he was like, and they killed him like 43 they, times or something. They did he, like a million things to right? him. He's like, I'm <laughs> still good. <laughs> it's still good. It's still good. <laughs> we should do a citation needed on, on Rasputin. Rasputin. Yeah. That would be a great citation. Yeah. The Russian people were trapped in communism, atheistic, God hating communism. For 70 plus years. The Russians finally cast it off. And then they just decided to go with a mafia based government. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, now they're run by an oligarchy of crooks. Yeah, exactly. Like, are you fucking kidding yeah, me? That's better. Like, like there are three, there are three systems just like, you know, before basically they had like royal families that were just like, yeah, oh, I'll just take all your shit and you can yeah, starve. Sure. And then it was the communists who were like, we'll just take all your shit and then you can starve. And now it's the oligarchs who are like, We'll take all most of your shit. Yeah. And some of you can starve. And you can't drive on sidewalks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and came out from under this communist oppression. I believe the deep state. Who is the deep state again? I don't know. Who I I, I don't. Is the deep state. Are we the deep state? I think I think when they say deep state, what they mean and and this is uh, this uh, please correct us if we're wrong here but i think when they refer to deep state yeah. i think they're talking about the people whose jobs are high level government jobs that are not turned over when the government when the change of power in you know, the oh, presidency oh, oh, shows so up so it's like it's the inner operatives. Exactly. They're all they're all deep state. They're involved in the state right. in ways that they're not going to get fired for. So they're like grassroots run the government yeah. from they, inside. Yeah, they all somehow have a deep state get together every couple of days to decide well, exactly how they hot. all want to do this together, which is, way, you know, it's always weird when they're like, yeah, the deep state's doing it. Like, well, who's controlling them? Because would they have to all get together and like cast a ballot? They all have like a fucking special rock in their drawer that they put in a box at yeah, the end right. of the day to decide what they're going to do at the end of the day. It does seem like... How do you a- poll each other? I realize, you know, I realize, you know, right now you could probably get a Google poll pretty easily between yourselves, right? But... You know, how do you all poll each other? How do you decide that the, how the deep state is shifting and moving? They're all planning the new world order. It's like, all like, just by sharing one Google Doc yeah, together. Yeah, and 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 the one person who has editorial rights is George Soros. <laughs> is furious with them that they dared to overthrow their God-hating atheism. There's Satanism because it's not atheism; it's Satanism. Russia was under bondage to Satanism. The the communist leaders were Satanists. They told the world they were atheists, but they were Satanists. Yeah, you keep saying this and not proving it. I know, it just is like, well, they They said, keep saying it. Here's what they said, Tom, but they weren't. Yeah. And I offer you no proof other than me saying it. That's how you make proof now. That's how things are proven now. It is true. true. We are in that world. All you have to do is look at Tom's Facebook feed. (laughs) 
The people in control of America today are Satanists. Oh, God. What do they defend? Baby killing. Selling baby parts. Well, if you get a good deal. Yeah. Look, what's the point of killing the baby if you can't make some money off Look, it? fucking Jody Baker or whatever's got five Mexicans she's going to fucking go buy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You know, you know, at least two of those she's gonna part out. <laughs> Take them to a chop shop, right? <laughs> she like fucking makes one into a low rider. <laughs> she gets, she just, you just, you wake up, you know, it's like, why do I have fucking undercarriage lights glued to my <laughs> fucking what? Fuck is happening. The kid's walking down the street and part of him starts jumping. He's got hydraulics. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> brr, chicka, brr, chicka. Wouldn't it be awesome if Jim and Lori Baker fucking drove around in El Camino? Like, <laughs> like pinstriping and shit all over it. Um, oh my God. Bality, pedophilia. And celebrate it. They celebrate it. Now listen to this. I- they celebrate no, pedophilia. Nobody, nobody celebrate. celebrates pedophilia. The baby part selling isn't happening. The pedophilia is not happening or not being celebrated. This is not being promoted by anybody in control of America. What about the spirit cooking, Tom? That's pretty good. If you get <laughs> just enough salt, that's the, that's you the gotta, thing. You got to season everything right. We had our special sauce. <laughs> this today in a Russian newspaper today. The decision of the European Court on Human Rights regarding the law on homosexuality promotion ban to children may be considered as an attempt to meddle in Russia's internal affairs, according to the chairman of the Federation Council's committee. Yeah, you know what they're saying is like, fucking, you are hurting human beings, and that's fucking, that's like against human rights. Yeah, and it's the European Human Rights Council. Okay, great. Russia's not a part of that. Is Russia a part of that? No. So then why? And Russia's like, yeah, I don't like it because it makes me feel weird because the rest of the world's judging me about yeah. my fucking actions. All well, you yeah. people are being judgy judgersons because we just kill a couple gays. <laughs> what the fuck? Man, we just want to beat up the queers. You can't even strangle a homo these days. <laughs> For constitutional legislation and state construction, Andre Klishas. He said... The senator, this Russian senator, said the current legislation corresponds to the public morality that developed in the Russian society. As long as the legislative solution to the public appeal is within the authority of the national legislature, the European inter- institutional body should have refrained from interference with our country's internal affairs. Said Russia? Yeah, right. Pot me kettle. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, these other countries are interfering in our, they're meddling in our affairs. I think what we need to do is we need to get a bunch of hackers together and we need to <laughs> hack into their homophobes <laughs> and see if we can hack into their homophobes and get them to change their mind. They're already hacking into their homophobes. They just use machetes. <laughs> no, they hack into their homo stuff. <laughs> Here's what they're talking about. Russia passed a law that bans homosexual propaganda to children. Yeah. So, so Tom, what's their law? The Russian law bans giving children any information about homosexuality. (laughs) This is a law that was used against the Disney film beauty and the beast. (laughs) When he called for the, when, when when a ruling party MP called for the musical to be banned. So we are not talking about gay propaganda, simply the existence of homosexuality if children know about it in any way. Yeah, right. Right. It's not like it's not like they're handing you a book on like how to suck a cock. Right. Yeah, right. Right. It's not like it's not like a coloring book on how to eat a fucking other guy's ass. <laughs> right. It's a fu- it's like, oh, yeah, you can't even know that a homosexual person exists. Right. In a movie where it's not even really explicit. Yeah. It, it's like it, there, there's not like. They're open their lunch boxes and it's like, oh, here, it's, it's ass lube. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> it's not a thing. Oh, look, I got a, I got a chocolate milk and some Astro Glide. <laughs> <laughs> the milk just goes right, right down, down afterwards. Right down. Yeah. yeah. Especially if the chicken is dry, you just yeah. squirrel oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like mayonnaise. Yeah, that's what mayonnaise is. <laughs> it is. It's just, just mouth, lube. mouth lube. A federal law, a national law in Russia. You cannot push homosexual, lesbian, transgendered propaganda to children. Or tell them, or tell them that, that those things are, are a thing. 
That's really more. The European Court on Human Rights is now condemning Russia. Yeah, as they yeah. should. Right. Because they're that's the thing. Because they're awful. That's demanding the repeal of that law. Which if they don't do it, fucking boo hoo. Yeah. N- right? <laughs> it, it, look, Cecil, demand something of me I don't want to give you. Uh give me your keys to your car. No. Fuck. Yeah. All right. That's over. Fine. It looks like I'm just gonna have to devalue your currency. <laughs> As a Christian, I stand with the Russian people in their defense of morality, Amen. and I condemn the dark state. I thought it was a it, deep state. Now it's the dark. Is it the deep, it's dark, a deep state? dark state? <laughs> deep, dark, deep state. dark state. It was also a dark and stormy night it was state. A deep, dark, stormy night state. <laughs> it is in control of the United States and Europe and Canada and Australia and New Zealand. It is a Luciferian, demonic, satanic. Those are all the same thing. Empire. You're just naming that the isn't... same thing. It's all this... <laughs> same thing. Just uh... like Australia, New Zealand. Same thing. <laughs> touch, it, touch, it, touch, it, touch me. I wanna be dirty. I like this story because fuck them. It's from the New York Times. Israeli woman who sued El Al, I don't know, for sexism wins landmark ruling. Um, so the Israeli airline employees um, are no longer a- allowed to ask women to change their seat because some dumb shit doesn't want to sit next to a vagina. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Before that, that was a thing. thing. Why didn't they just move the dude somewhere? I don't want to sit next to a woman. Great. Grab another seat, motherfucker. I, I always, un- I, I just don't understand that at all. Like you paid for a seat. Yeah. You get the seat you paid for. That's it. You don't get to fucking like decide ahead of time. Be like, well, am I going to be sitting next to a kid? Dude, there's lots of times I've been on a plane and I would have, I would have rather my fucking seat mate been a different person. Sure. Right. Like I fucking sat, I sat on a flight to New York. There's a fucking monster of a man who sat next to me. He was fucking huge in every way. He was drunk as a skunk and he talked the whole flight. I would have chosen virtually anyone else. But I don't get to pick. Sure. It was his fucking seat, man. Yeah. That's it. Got the same seat. I just got fucking mashed into the corner and he fucking yammered and drank in my ear. And that's just that. That's the indignity of air travel. Yeah. That's just how it is. Well, I, what I like is like these, these people that are, and these are really Orthodox Jews. Right. Don't like that a woman is sitting next to him. Right. They're like, I just don't, I just don't think that a woman should sit next to me. Well, they're whatever. afraid of accidentally being touched. Yeah. Afraid of accidentally being touched. I'm touching. trying to purposely be touched. <laughs> <laughs> no, but these these people are so fucking creeped out by women that they want to be moved. Yep. They don't want to be there. And then they're finally just like, no, this this you can't you can't do that anymore. We can't, we're not, this is not a thing we're gonna do anymore. And and like you say, you know, just move them to the back of the plane. Yeah. You know, just go to the back of the plane. Just create a bigot section. That's what I think they should do. Is is just like here's the here's the weird rocking prayer box section, oh, right? And you guys are just in your prayer box section. This is it. You guys yeah. want to have your little like suitcase for your hat and all the rest yeah. of that crazy. That's shit. great. That you guys have. good for you. That's awesome. Here's your unpasteurized milk. <laughs> right. You're the Amish of your people. You're a weird non zipper having people, and you're just gonna sit and rock and. St- cram shit in your right. prayer boxes that you tie to your forehead, yeah. then do your weird shit. But you don't get to do that around normal people. <laughs> right. You have well, to be in the corral back you, there. You could do it around normal people, but you can't insist that the normal people cede to your crazy exactly. ass demands. Exactly. Right? I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine if somebody said next to me was like, I'm going to need you to conform in some way to my wacky right, religious. Right. I'm going to be like, really? <laughs> oh, no, no. You are you literally are staring into virtually the unvarnished energy of Satan himself when you come up against the forces that are pushing the homosexual agenda forward. Uh, this is uh, Right Wing Watch. This is Dave Coach. Da Coach. Not a coach. Daubenmeyer. We are at war and LGBTQ activists want to kill us. Hmm. That sounds accurate. Yeah. Here we go. Those people that you see beating the drums, they are possessed. I love that he has an it's iPhone caller? right now. The caller is is held up to his <laughs> shitty headset <laughs> microphone. Could you get a fucking shittier setup than this guy? Well, look, his entire 
podcast or video cast setup cost eleven ninety five at micro. This is that shitty podcast that you listen to where the guy got up and like fucking like let his cat out in the middle of it and just left the recording on serious inquiries only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's five cats. Uh, he let one out each one, and Dude, you're waiting 25 minutes. You're like, Jesus, it's taken forever. There's an extreme amount of pussy in that house. I'm just saying. <laughs> and hate the Lord, and they're fighting. Folks, when we show like tooth and nails, and we're just standing there. Tooth and nails? That's how they're fighting, is they're using their teeth. They have a single tooth. And yeah. all their nails. All their nails <laughs> just tooth, one tooth. <laughs> oh, he, I guess he's probably broadcasting from the south. So tooth, tooth makes sense. Yeah. Bobby Carey. Just Bobby <laughs> Carey. <laughs> Your dentures and nails. <laughs> and um, when we showed up, folks, when we showed up initially, and I, I preached on the on the the bullhorn for about a minute, minute and a half just to get us, you know, just to kick it off a little bit. The other side, now you hear me. You better hear me. Across the street, the other crowd began to stand up and sing, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. These reprobates on the other side were singing that Jesus loves them. So for this is a guy who gets to decide who Jesus loves. He's so mad about but this, this. But this is a guy who gets to decide that, right? Uh, right. Like, but like you get to you, you as that person, you get to decide who Jesus loves and who does he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And you can't sing that song because that song, that's my song. I love when they, when they, when these guys do that shit, right? Yeah. It's like, Hey, you know, uh, we're more numerous. Yeah. We're louder and we can sing your songs to you, man. Yeah. We can, we know your shit better than you yeah. know your shit. You don't get to control it. Right. This is that, this is the gays circling. Uh -huh. uh, it's the, the same it's shit. It's the same thing. Yeah. And the best we shall overcome. It gets his goat. Oh, and it makes him mad. You could see he's, he's turning red. He's, he's turning red. Yeah. For those of you, who think that we need to go to the parade to tell them that Jesus loves them. They already got that. <laughs> they, they, they got that. Okay. <laughs> they already got that. And then, he's going to have a so breakdown. He's, he's sputtering so mad. mad. He's sputtering. I can't mad. stand it. I love God. It. God. Wouldn't you love to be in that guy's like, like, okay. So I'm not a, I'm not a super confrontational guy. I don't like that sort of thing, Me but either. I will say this. There's a few people that we watch that it would just be so much fun to be right in front of them and doing the one thing that really tweaks them <laughs> just to see how they'd react in right? person. I just, I, I, this guy would be a hoot to go to and protest. Off. He, he really would, would be a hoot to go and protest because you could see just, he's just thinking about it and he's red. He, the, the best part is he's a guy who clearly just gets very upset. Yeah. Right. He's, he's like, he's not a guy who has a tight control over his emotional response. Sure, right. Sure. He's a guy who'd be super fun to watch him get mad. Yeah. And then once he does, you can needle him for being mad. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, oh no. Are you mad? Are you Jesus mad, loves you. Even if you're mad. That's not how the song goes. Wait a minute. He just keep fucking with that guy. You could fuck with this guy till he killed himself. Yeah. yeah. He looks like he's ready to explode right now. This wasn't a place to go share the gospel, although that's why we did. This was a place. This was a battleground. Around. This was a this was a war room. I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you. And for you, for those, he's clearly talking about pride. He's talking right, about going right. out on a pride uh, day. For the, what do they call them? Uh, Gay people. <laughs> Sunday morning, Monday morning quarterbacks. Those sitting in the up up in the uh, cheap seats. Up. In You're a coach. These are metaphors that should come right to hand. No, I'm kidding. Right? You're kidding me. You should be talking about the fourth quarter and third down. Jesus Christ. Be it, be it third and inches. I mean, he, come on. He wears his like defensive coaching guy helmet or fucking ear. And the peanuts and popcorn crowd. You ain't got any idea. Keep your daggone mouth shut. You ain't got any idea about how, <laughs> what goes on down there and how to share the gospel. You ain't got any idea. <laughs> He's so You're mad. So mad. You're mad, bro. You know, what it is? you know how bad it is. All He's these gay people are upset when I yell at them. Head. He's getting so red. He is. Keep your mouth shut. You ain't got any idea what the enemy's like. The thing that I'm most proud about is when we went to the parade, we had 22 guys who now, for the first time in their lives, know what the enemy's all about. They yeah, they sang a fucking Jesus song at him. They sang a song at him. He's so mad because they sang a song. This is how this is how easily tweaked these fuckers when are. When I was a kid, I used to get on my brother's nerves, like my brother would do something, uh -huh. and I would get on his nerves by being like, 
I'd be like, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. 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 And I'd be like, you messed up. And the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Yeah. And he would get, he'd get so like spitting mad. He would like drool out of his mouth and he'd like swing at me and he gets super mad. And this just reminds me exactly of my brother when he would get mad as a kid. The first fist fight I ever got in was when I was in fifth or sixth grade. I can't recall which with a kid, with a kid named Jason Harzak. And I got into a fist fight with him because I was riding my bike and he was insulting me in a sing song tone. And he and just fought him, pissed me off. I rode my bike <laughs> right over to him. I jumped off my bike and he and I went to it. That was it. <laughs> uh, like, nobody oh. sings songs. It's all to I me. I don't know why yeah. it made me mad. Yeah. I'm like the coach or duck coach, not a coach. Like, uh, no, the like, coach. Yeah. Singing insulted me twice. <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, so we went, we went for it because he was fucking singing insults at me. I got into a fight in uh, in uh, junior high because somebody asked me from the back of the crowd, because there's a big crowd around the people, right? Sure. So these two kids, are they're duking it out. And somebody asked me, said, who's fighting? And I said, oh, it's, it's, it's Jamie and Scott. And then Scott said, no, no, it's me and you. And then we fought. <laughs> I had no idea why. So wait, he stopped fighting he Scott? He stopped fighting Jamie. Scott fought, stopped fighting Jamie to fight me. And then he kicked me in the balls. Dude, wait a minute. Super hard too. I had like, I had to go to the nurse. Like I was like, like that, he hit me so hard in the nuts that I was like, what did the other guy who was fighting him just walked away? Like he just stopped fighting. I'm, He's like, okay, I guess I'm done. We like tussled for a little while. We punched each other. And then when he, he like hauled off and racked my nuts. Oh, they were like lodged in my nostrils. Oh my <laughs> he God. Fucking rolled me. Damn, yeah, dude. I got beat up. That's a stupid. I, I love the reasons we got in, oh, get in yeah. fights when you're like, yeah, you're like seventh, eighth I just grade. Turned like, around. I like everybody. literally turned around and said, it's two people. Yeah, I identified the combatants. Well, now we, you're one of them, bitch. I got kicked in the balls. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. I can't imagine what it would take to get me into a fight. Now. I know. I know. Somebody would have to be in real danger. danger. Someone would have Someone to be in, be in danger, real danger. Right. Yeah. For me to throw a to, punch or something. Yeah, like, yeah, right. I would I couldn't imagine being in a fight. Um out of anger. Like out of out of an out of yeah, an anger no. response. Yeah. As as a as a, a self preservation, sure. Sure. But I have an anger response to actually to strike somebody just because I was mad at him. Yeah, I can't even. I can't even imagine it. Yeah, I can. But I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I've seen it. And if you think you just need to show up and tell everybody how much Jesus loves them, you need to go stick your head inside your your pillow and go bury your head under your couch because you ain't got. Any Wait, my head go, wait a minute. My head goes in a pillow then under the couch? First? Is it to protect it from it jamming it under the couch? <laughs> Seems like a lot of process. Can I just go to the sand? Is that okay? Because it's not a metaphor that I can uh, do right? instead. Seems better. What am I doing once I'm under the couch? How long do I stay there? <laughs> How do like I get? A, it's very short under there. Do I have to right? like... I've got like a flush couch thing. Do I have to do like child's pose? Right. <laughs> I gotta lift the couch and put it on my head. <laughs> Stand there like, okay, now what, coach? Now what, coach? Now what, not a coach? <laughs> Any idea of the war that's raging outside the four walls of the church? Yeah, there's literally no war if you just let gay people be gay people. But even there's if like, you don't, there's like no war at all to be had yeah. if you would have just stayed home. But, if you would have just been like, hey, you know what? Gay people exist today and they're happy about it. Cool. I'm gonna watch. The fucking NBA draft or whatever. I feel like anybody who's been to war might be a little insulted when the enemy just sings a song at you. Like, yeah, my enemy shot at me with yeah, an RPG. Exactly. Your enemy sings songs. Yeah, but, Sing songs! But they're IED songs. <laughs> Pollyanna, stick your head in the sand. Ostriches, that's all you are. That's all you are. I'll just share the love of Jesus with them. Hey, they think Jesus loves them. They think we're the evil ones. They're, so mad. They're singing it ironically. <laughs> so They're singing. They don't think they don't care about Jesus. Uh, don't you understand what's going on? Don't you know it's a war? Don't you know they want your children? Don't you know they're occupying your pulpits? Don't you understand that those same people singing Jesus loves you, this I know, want to kill us? <laughs> <laughs> they literally don't even know you exist. They, they wouldn't know you exist. Unless you show if, up and yell at them unless in Unless you show up with 30 of you and you start shouting about Jesus at their fucking parade to shame them, right? right? Unless you use your holy book to shame other people, they don't even know you exist. You could just sit there and quietly judge them. They wouldn't even, there wouldn't even be a gay pride parade. If just nobody cared who fucked who. Exactly. If this guy didn't exist, there wouldn't, there wouldn't need to be one. Right. right. Because most people would just be like, who cares? Right. Everybody would just fuck the people yeah. they like to fuck. 
these people are going to die out. They're going to die they out really eventually. Are. They really are just going to die out and it's not going to be, it's just going to be like, okay, well, they dead. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. So this is Right Wing Watch again. Bishop, ew, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> EW. So that's what I said. I just, I just, you just read it. You just fucking enunciate. I get it. I yeah. get it. Says, uh, Jackson says the left. Wants to see Christians dead. This is the same thing. It's pretty much the same thing. I got to tell you, though. Hold on. I don't want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking gross. But here's the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> his voice. His voice. His voice. Oh, Play it again, Sam. He sounds like the Grinch. Where we've got a guy. This guy, Hopkins. We've got a guy. his name. He's got a Hopkins. He's got a Hopkins. We got this guy. It's amazing. He doesn't sound anything like that. No, he doesn't. <laughs> That's Eli's voice for you. <laughs> Accuracy is not a virtue. <laughs> Mimicry is not a virtue. And we shouldn't even remember his name. He's in, uh, he's in hell now. But. He targeted Republicans. He was looking for Republicans to kill. All right. Yeah, we, we know that. He's a yeah, bad guy. He's, he's a bad dead. person. But that's not the narrative you hear in the mainstream media now. No, that, that that's wasn't. it. That's that how you heard about that's, it. That's how you heard about it, too, because they specific, the, the guy specifically asked, is that Republicans practicing over there? And somebody said, yeah. And he's like, cool, I'll pull out my gun and shoot him. Yeah. Like, and, everybody knew that. Everybody knew that from the mainstream media. They heard that. I read it on MSN. Yeah. MSN. Yeah. It's, it's the most main. It's just because it's, my browser it's one letter there. away from MSM. <laughs> now, you don't hear them saying, you know, the left really needs to tone down all of this hatred and all this bitterness and all this anger and all this. They really, no, you don't hear that. You know, they hear, oh, we, we need to change the atmosphere. We, meaning all of us, it, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a communal issue. It's a common issue. So, so he's saying that, all these people that came out afterwards that said there needs to be a toning down of this rhetoric so nobody else gets shot. He's saying it's the left's fault because they were the ones with the violent yeah, rhetoric. And we shouldn't have to tone down our side. You yeah, should only you have guys to tone down yeah. your side. It's not, it, it is not a large, it's not symptomatic perhaps of a larger problem of the vitriol that defines American politics. It's just the left are a bunch of assholes. Yeah. I beg the difference not. Now this hatred this vitriol, this violence is coming from the left primarily. From the left primarily. They're the loudest ones because they're the ones not in power, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they're, they're not sitting on their laurels. They're, they're not the ones waiting for something that's like, okay, well, we got the power. We don't care. They're not in power, so they're going to be louder. Just well, naturally. It's just, it, this is just the swing of the pendulum right now. Exactly. That's, that's all this yeah. is. You remember that guy who, sh who shot uh, the, the congresswoman who was standing sure. on the steps yeah. of the- Gabby uh, Gifford or whatever yeah, her name was? Right. Yeah. And let's face it, the left gets away with all kinds of crazy stuff, and you don't hear anybody denouncing it. And you, you are hear, right now. You don't hear anybody mentioning it You're, or de defining it. You're just saying it. What kind of crazy stuff? The crazy stuff. Give me an example of crazy no, stuff. No, thank you. I he would will like just to say know. it. Can you give me an example of the crazy stuff? Somebody who is conservative says something and, and, and all the conservatives are among the first to jump on them and denounce them and, and separate themselves. I mean, President Trump himself, when he said things that people didn't agree with, they publicly come out against him, even uh, his own fellow Republicans. You don't see the Democrats doing that. You see it don't. all the time. Yeah, you see it all the time. See, it happens fucking constantly. Happens constantly. The left is fucking eating its own all the time. Sure. Don't see them doing it. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. You don't. Oh, yeah. Now, I mean, you'd have to be certifiable not to say, yeah, we don't want anybody killing congressmen. You'd have to be certifiable not to say that as a, you know, a Nancy Pelosi, a Chuck Schumer. Of course, they're going to well, say would that. Well, would they not say it before a congressman was shot? Well, I, is he saying that like, OK, well. It's disingenuous because, of course, they're saying. So, what should they have done? Is this like is this like the metaphysics of morals, where he's like, you wouldn't say it beforehand because it's now it suits your purposes. Yeah, so it's not the the, the morality is not moral because it's altruistic, right? 
Is right. that is yeah, that is yeah, that the, yeah. that's the argument? It is has it there, to be. An there, has to be there has to be no self interest in what you do right. in for it to be a moral act. Right. So, are you saying that since there's self interest, of course they're going to say this that they're that they're not acting morally? So what should they have done instead? I don't know, like fucking right. call for him to get shot because it fucking hopefully they'll have to replace the seat. Right. It, it, there's there's literally nothing they could have done that would have satisfied. Right. His, this guy. His, there's nothing you yeah. could do. You're damned uh-huh. if you do, damned exactly. if you don't with this yeah. guy. Now, I give them scant credit for it, to tell you the truth. Scant credit. Scant credit is like a five thirty score. <laughs> You're a renaissance with that shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can I have another title loan? No! <laughs> <laughs> title uh, loans are horrible, by the way. I bought this TV. It's just only wanna, fucking 900 payments of 29.99. Say how terrible title loans are. Let's face it, folks. The bottom line is this comes back to the difference between God-fearing and godless people. That's really what it comes down to. See, most of people on the left are so godless that they can't understand our love for them because they, because they are godless. They don't, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in the love of God. They don't, they don't understand it. They don't, they don't understand how much I love them. Those stupid fucking <laughs> mongoloid people <laughs> on the other side. Can I say mongoloid anymore? Is that, I think you can, as long as you mean it, as long as I mean they're from Mongolia. <laughs> We're going to get an email from a Mongolian listener. He's going to send it from horseback. He's going to shoot it at us from <laughs> horseback arrow. with an arrow. <laughs> I've been bowling since I was three. I have a fucking stupid hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Big furry stupid hat. <laughs> I hunt my dinner with an eagle or whatever. <laughs> those people are fucking They're metal. Amazing, they dude. are fucking metal. That's those fucking people. the greatest shit I've God, ever seen in my life. They have a fucking big ass bird and they're like fucking. <laughs> they are Game of Thrones come to life. Those people are that fucking so metal crazy. as fuck, man. It's like, God I'm damn. I'm ride a horse. God with an damn. Eagle. Fuck, man. They got a big ass bird of prey and they're just like, I'm going to fucking catch something. You're like, you go. Right? You go. When, when you have weaponized nature, yeah. you are. F- that's it. <laughs> That's it. He's like, I don't know. It's like having a fucking leopard go bring you dinner. <laughs> like I just, just like, just like go a, get a boy. There's just like a lion at Pizza Hut. He's like, roar. <laughs> Bob roar, man. There's <laughs> like a bear in the drive-thru. He's like, I'd like. I like, what the fuck? It's a boa constrictor at the subway bringing you Every back. Every time sandwich. the bear just keeps bringing you back the garbage, and you're like, "No, I won't eat that." He's like, "Fuck it, it's good. Eat it. Come on, this is good food. It's a picnic basket." <laughs> People are starving in China, not in Mongolia because they have fucking animals to hunt for them, but in China they're starving. I laid waste to the entire Burger King to bring this to you. Just dragging a fucking bag full of grease. This is good stuff. Were you too good for this? <laughs> when, you expect, when you ask a bear to bring you lunch, I'm a scavenger. Oh, Jesus Christ. So that's all the time we have today. Be sure to check out our other show, Citation Needed, uh, that airs every Wednesday. Uh, you can go check it out on iTunes or at citationpod.com. Of course, you can always share episodes of our show with other people. Uh, You can go to dissonancepod.com to find out all the information you need to know about this show. That's going to wrap it up for this show. We're going to leave you, like we always do, with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno-Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death in towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques, and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, vaccine nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, doublespeak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this.
The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.